Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about odd perimenopause and postmenopause symptoms that are actually way more common than you think. Most of these are not experiences that you would think to associate with hormones, but many women struggle with them. And I'm fairly confident that once you discover what they are, many of you will relate to these odd manifestations as well. Let's start with the weirdest of the 12. It doesn't have an actual name, but I refer to it as the menopause flu. It's a set of symptoms that usually occur together that convinces you that you're coming down with something, only an illness never materializes. It's happened to me several times, so I don't panic about getting sick anymore, but boy, I used to. It usually presents with a variation of the following symptoms that oddly resemble illness. Sore throat, feeling feverish, but you don't actually have a temperature, fatigue, aches and pains, lack of appetite, and occasionally nausea and a headache. This ever-changing cluster of symptoms leaves you waiting for the inevitable sickness to set in. Only after a short period of time, the symptoms usually ease up and an illness never appears. It's the weirdest thing. Number two on the list is body odor. Many women are confused and frustrated by this because out of nowhere, they just begin to smell very unpleasantly. Despite showering and putting on enough deodorant and antiperspirant for an entire locker room full of sweaty football players. I've read many comments asking for recommendations for products to help erase the sweaty frog holding onions odor. It occurs due to shifts in hormones and the fact that many menopausal women are often chronically anxious and stressed. That type of sweat is fattier and bacteria loves it. Hence the funky smell. I'm sure all of the night sweats and hot flashes don't help either. Next is a lack of spatial awareness. This is a truly odd and painful symptom. It's largely due to a lack of ability to judge the environment around you. So you misjudge how close and far away things are, usually resulting in an accident. I cannot count the amount of times I smashed into or tripped over the same darn furniture, rammed into all of the door frames and banged my elbows. I was a walking bruise for a very long time. It's mainly due to changes in depth perception and concentration. Number four is phantom periods. This seems more plausible during perimenopause, but I've actually experienced it in postmenopause as well. Many women comment that they have all of the PMS and pain associated with their periods, but their periods never show up. How lovely that even when our periods are absent, we still experience all of the discomfort. And how scary is it when it happens during postmenopause when bleeding is not supposed to be a thing? Foot pain is next. Sometime into postmenopause, I noticed that it often felt as if I was walking on marbles. In fact, to this day, I often hobble around like I'm walking on rocks. And I'm not alone in that experience. It's not something you'd think to associate with hormones, but the two are indeed connected. Low estrogen affects the elasticity of the band of tissue that connects the heel bone to the toes, and it affects the fat pad in the balls of the feet. This can leave you in a world of discomfort, especially if you're on your feet for any length of time. Number six is internal vibrations. So many women come to me concerned about the buzzing in their bodies. It happens to me occasionally, and I have to admit, it is a bit disturbing. It feels like I have a dozen iPhones on vibrate inside my body. It's disturbing, and it can strike anywhere. I believe it's the result of low estrogen's effects on the nervous system, stress, and anxiety. Electric shocks and jabs also make the list. This symptom doesn't even seem sensical, but so many women struggle with them in perimenopause, and postmenopause. Random zaps and jabbing pain that hit out of nowhere. And although they only last for seconds, they're significant enough for you to stop and take notice. Sometimes I'm convinced I'm being stung by something and I swat at myself, looking mighty silly, I might add. Other times it hits my chest and that only serves to ramp up my anxiety. It's believed to be caused by blips in the central nervous system when estrogen begins to shift. Number eight is blurry vision. I deal with this constantly and I'm very bothered by it. I sometimes can't see things with my glasses on. I have been to the eye doctor numerous times and aside from dry eyes, which does play a part, my eyes are fine. 
I have new glasses, I use daily drops, yet I still can't see well at times. And I look rather silly squinting to see through my bifocals. Other women have shared similar stories with me. Aside from the dryness, low estrogen causes the corneas to stiffen and changes the way light travels into the eyes, which also plays a role in blurriness. Next is OCD. Anxiety is one of the biggest struggles many women face in both perimenopause and postmenopause, but it can manifest in many ways. An onset of OCD can and does occur in menopause. If you're all of a sudden obsessing over things, doing things in set patterns, like always taking the third product off the shelf at the grocery store, or having to do things in very specific ways every time, you may have your hormones to blame. Number 10 is extreme temperature shifts in the body. And I'm not referring to the classic hot flash. I'm talking about being absolutely icy frozen or feeling like you're on fire. I'm lucky enough to be blessed with this particular symptom. I have episodes where my hands, feet, and nose are so frozen that they hurt and only a shower will warm them up. And I have episodes where my feet are burning so badly that all I want to do is cry. I assume the likely cause is low estrogen's effects on the hypothalamus. And although it's odd and disturbing, it is fairly common. Disorientation is next. Confusion and brain fog occur often in menopause, and they may play a role, but I'm referring to being puzzled about where you are and where you're supposed to be going. I'm famous for being disoriented in the mall. I have the worst time trying to figure out where I am and which way to go every time I exit a store. I have to stand there looking around until I either clue in or someone that I'm with points me in the right direction. It makes driving very challenging for many women as well. Number 12 is change of taste. It seems very odd that shifting hormones could cause food to start tasting weird, but many women complain about this very phenomenon. Certain foods that were always favorites all of a sudden start tasting off. I've actually thrown foods away thinking they were bad because they tasted so strangely. I've also noticed the opposite. Foods I always hated, I now eat rather frequently. Low estrogen affects saliva and causes dry mouth, which can affect your sense of taste. How many of these odd symptoms do you struggle with? I have 10 of them. Yikes. Out of the 100 possible symptoms that can occur in menopause, leave it up to me to struggle with all of the strange ones. Side note, I do have a support group if you're interested in connecting with other perimenopausal and postmenopausal women. You'll find the link to that group in the description under this video. I wish you all health, happiness, and peace of body and mind. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.